It's been described as the greatest loss anyone can ever experience, the death of a child. Anytime you grieve a loved one, it's going to have an impact. Now, my next guest, Debbie, lost her youngest son, Tony, seven years ago in such a tragic way that the grief is still overwhelming. Here's Debbie's story. It hurts most to see when he's very young. My youngest son, Tony, was cleaning our pool and drowned. I can remember my husband calling me and then he said, Tony is gone. I dropped to the floor and I just started screaming, my son has drowned. When Tony died, a piece of me went with him. I miss hearing Tony laugh. I miss him saying, hey, mama. I'll always cry, but I'll always have his love in my heart and those wonderful memories forever. Well, Debbie is joining me along with our very good friend and Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall. Welcome to you both. Thank you. <laughs> Debbie, I'm so sorry for your loss. And one thing you'll not hear me say is I know how you feel. Tell me how this affects you still today. Well, you know, Dr. Phil, you know, there's a sense of me that I still feel robbed. I didn't get to say goodbye to Tony, I didn't get to tell him that one last time how much I loved him. Dr. Freeland, how do people deal with this level of grief? Yeah, first of all, people should know that this is um, highly individual. This is specific to you, the way that you're going to grieve, and that there's no single right way to get through this grieving process. And many people think that that's true, and it's just not. Yeah. The other thing that's really important is people don't know some of the emotions that are going to come at them. It may be a whole range of them, everything from anger to denial to shock uh, to depression. And these emotions can come at you in any order and at any time. Yeah. You know, most people are able to endure a tragedy and eventually get to a new normal. But what about those that can't seem to get there? Estimates are that about 10% of people who are going through grieving end up having a more severe form, something that we now have come to call a complicated grief or grief depression. People who are experiencing this may have um, more severe symptoms and for an extended period of time. Things like extreme sadness, feelings of isolation, uh, feelings of uh, depression. They may uh, feel hopelessness. In addition to that, they may take on an irrational blame for the death or the loss of their loved one. And other symptoms may include sleep disturbances and increased use in tobacco and alcohol and difficulty in functioning in work situations and social situations uh, with relationships and sometimes even in tasks of daily living like getting to the grocery store. Many people who grieve have a sense that maybe I don't want to go on without my loved one. I've lost my will to live. But people with this complicated grief may have persistent thoughts of suicide. It's important if those thoughts occur, it is time to get immediate help. Well, I also understand there can be physical effects associated with particularly this prolonged grief. A study suggests that um, someone who has had a significant loss of a loved one has a 21 times greater risk of having a heart attack in the first 24 hours after the death of that loved one. Yeah. And another study suggests that um, there's an increased risk of heart attack and stroke in the first month after the loss of a loved one. What are some strategies for dealing with grief? So I think one of the most important ones is, is knowing that um, you are going to work through some pain. The second would be that some of these emotions that we talked about are going to be coming at you at different times and in different ways, and they may quite take you by surprise. Um, you should also know that you're going to uniquely work your way through this. No one is going to tell you exactly how to do it because um, it's uh, going to be different for everyone. And then last but not least, there's a point at which you can and should ask for help. If your grief is too deep or overwhelming, as you described, or if um, the experience is lasting too long. 
And then the other thing that I think is really important is not forget that physical part. Um, Talk to your doctor about the fact that you're grieving. Ask them to help you monitor any medical conditions that you may have. Stay on your prescribed treatments and medications as your doctor um, is supporting you too. And then don't forget the basics. I know they're hard to think about at a time like this, but eating right, getting as much sleep as you can, um, and trying to stay as active and uh, get a little bit of exercise to try and stay healthy during this time. For many people, it's hard to accept that a future without your loved one is your new reality. Support groups and professional counseling can be really valuable. Grief is not a mental illness, but if you're struggling with it, don't hesitate to ask for help. And a place to start, in my opinion, is GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. Robin and I love this website because it's trusted information on so many topics. Of course, while you're there, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter, and some of this healthy, uh, helpful information can come right to you. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially our friend Dr. Frieda Lewis-Hall, and thank you for sharing your story.